Hey everyone, Casualties Gaming here. So, I wanted to do a short guide video on ROM hacks. Uh, maybe a slight explanation as to what they are, um, how to use them, how to patch them, and how to get them on your uh, retro emulation handhelds. Uh, uh, there's been a few people that have been shocked that these sorts of devices, the cheaper ones anyway, will run them. Uh, in my experience, anything like the Ambernic SP or like the MiU Flip or uh, the MiU Mini or the the uh, the Plus, anything like that, those are the ones I have. But anything in that genre with those chipsets and whatnot uh, has no issue running at least the stuff below PS1. Uh, when you're talking about N64, I would suggest something a little bit more high end. This is a Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. Uh, this will run uh, even some GameCube and a little bit of PSP. I haven't messed with the PSP, but anyway, it's got no issues running N64 and it's had absolutely no issues running the Zelda uh, and pro wrestling game ROM hacks that I've thrown at so far. So uh, you'll need a uh, slightly higher end device for running that. But for anything, the lower end systems, I've not messed with PS1, so I cannot speak to that. Uh, some of the lower men ones might work fine. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I am here to show you how to do this. So we're here on romhacking.net. Uh, so this is a ROM hack for Super Mario Land called Super Mario Land DX. Uh, this is for the original Game Boy. So uh, it addresses some frame rate issues. Uh, it changes the sprites and revamps those. Uh, Luigi is added. Uh, the old graphics are an option. Uh, it says it upgrades the graphics. I, you can kind of be the judge of that. Uh, I mean, I suppose. It seems to me like it more adds more color to it. Uh, definitely changes the sprites. Uh, different color palette. Uh, it still looks like a Game Boy game to me. But anyway. Uh, you can argue with me in the comments if you want. As far as how, whether the graphics are better or not. But... So, we got that. Uh, there are a few different ways to go about patching this in, but first, we're going to hit download. Uh, as you can see, I've done a couple takes of this already. Uh, so, it is downloaded. Now, uh, we are going to... Oops. That's not supposed to be there. Um, okay. We're going to unzip this. Uh, and then, we're going to go back. We're going to go to our ROM patcher here. So, actually, if you go to... If you're on the ROM hacking website, there's a uh, a ROM patcher right here, online ROM patcher, which just links you to this. You can download your own ISP patcher if you want. Uh, I've had I've downloaded some and they work for a while, and then the one I was using, the name's escaping me right now. Uh, I, I'll patch it in up above or something if I remember while I'm editing this. Uh, but I had some, it was working just fine, and then they did an update, and now it doesn't want to work, so I just smited it off my computer. I also, for some reason, with that one, uh, so there's a couple different ways that it does this. With this online tool, what it will do is it will take your original ROM, and then it'll make a copy and patch the ROM into that. Uh, you gotta watch some of the, uh, the ones that you actually download will not actually give you an option and they will just take your ROM and they will patch it and then you're up shit's creek without a paddle as far as uh you know your original ROM so you'd need to then source that ROM however you may get it. I'm not here to lecture you about, you know, how you get them or where you get them. That's, you know, up to you and how you do it. But anyway, um so when you just come into this, uh, these aren't going to be here. They'll be empty. But uh, this one wants the ROM file, so you'll just hit Browse. And you'll navigate to where your ROM is. So this is obviously where the ROM, but if you wanted to I'd go to Desktop, go to Retro Games for me. Uh, games. Uh, it is in Game Boy, and then in this file, and then it's just right there. So I hit Open. Uh, hit Browse. Um, so obviously it's already open, but I go to download. I just unzipped it out of the download files. Um, you can see I've been a little busy with, uh, with ROM hacks. It's kind of what I do, but so click that. It's a, it's an ISP file and we hit apply patch. It will apply the patch. We can get out of here. And 
Okay, yeah, there it is. It's in our downloads. So, as far as the devices go, so if we go down here, I've already got my uh, my SD card for my Ambernick 35XX SP. Go to ROMs here. Uh, find the correct file for whatever you may have patched. You know, if if you're if you're familiar with these devices, you know how they work. Uh, if it's an NES game, it's going to be in the Famicom section. Uh, if it is a Super Nintendo game, it'll be in the Super Famicom section, uh, PS, Saturn, uh, whatever you patched. It doesn't... Just go to wherever the game needs to go. Uh, for me, it'll be in Game Boy. So, if you notice, I've already got, uh, the game patched in here. So, notice, for one, that I have Super Mario Land already on here. So, one thing that I did do uh, in the take before this is I renamed it to Super Mario Land DX, which is the name of the ROM hack. You don't necessarily have to do that because when you patch it, it will just give you the name of the game and then it'll say patched here. Uh, I always rename them. Uh, if you keep the name patched, uh, it'll probably just default to patched 1, patch 2, patch 3 after that, but I would like to know what the hell it is I'm playing. So I always just rename them uh, as far as doing that. If you're in Windows 11 like me, uh, which adds a new st step to everything, you can hit rename. And then if we just do this the way I did it. Uh, actually, if we keep the parentheses and just shift DX, the name is completely different. And so it wouldn't even overwrite it. It would just copy straight over. Oops, I accidentally patched in the... Uh, well, okay, yeah. Don't accidentally patch your patchers or your ROM uh, your ROM hack ISP. Don't. Uh, yes, I do. Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. But anyway, that is how you patch ROMs and get them on your devices. Uh, after this is over, I'm going to go ahead and toss this in here. Uh, I might have to hit refresh in the operating system uh, to get it to read it. It just uh, sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. But that's how you patch your ROMs. Uh, so... Real quick, the last video I did, I know that there was some syncing issues with the audio, and it's driven me crazy. I'm not using uh, Streamlabs anymore. Uh, I've switched over to OBS. Uh, Streamlabs has been giving me issues with the syncing of the videos and all of that, and I think there's two or three I've got now that are like that, and it kind of drives me crazy. I thought about privating them. Maybe I will later. Uh, I, I don't know, as a viewer, you can let me know whether it drives you crazy or not. It certainly drives me crazy. But um, I've switched over to OBS. Uh, Streamlabs, for whatever reason, uh, my settings seemed to be changing randomly. I can't really explain it. <clears throat> I've been using OBS for a whole two days now, ever since the last video, basically. I haven't noticed that issue yet. It's more or less the same thing. They're the same company or they're linked or whatever. So there's still going to be a little bit of a learning curve. So bear with me on that a little bit. But it seems to be working fine right now. So anyway, that is it. I've been Casualties of Gaming. You have learned about ROM hacks and how to patch them in, I guess. And get them on your little retro gaming devices. And uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stupid shit YouTubers ask you to do. And I will talk to you later.